you've uh, delivered 1.4 million pounds in commission to brokers since March. Um, how much of this went to bridging brokers? Oh, direct question. Um, so just just to step step back from it for a minute, Beth. That's it. I mean, it, what we were everybody's kind of um, feeling the feeling a little bit weary. I think it's fair to say within within the business and outside of it. I mean, I think um, you know we 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 started off looking to communicate. Um, to our teams, why uh, what they're doing is so is of so much value, um, and and then we step back with Rob and, and with Vicky and, and and with Rostrum as well, and sort of said, look, you know, there must be some kind of some data points that 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 show the real value that that that's been developed. I mean, we we do often say that being open for business through lockdown um, is something that we should be proud of, but 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 so what and what did it do, um, and. Um, and so what I would say is that, you know, we, we looked at the way in which we had helped our colleagues. So we looked at not just uh, continuing to kind of keep everybody uh, well, very well employed, but also add to the team. Um, we looked at how we'd helped customers. Um, and we, we also thought how we were helping the wider, the wider you know, community of, of intermediaries, our partners, because if we're not strong and if they're not strong, uh, then, then actually, you know, that's where... Um, kind of specialist lending and, and also bridging bridging finance in particular is, is going is going to suffer and and uh, and customers aren't going to get access to the sorts of uh, solutions that Rob was talking about earlier that brokers are really appreciating. So, to answer the question, um, I mean, we, we have seen uh, a very strong level of performance through the period in terms of in terms of bridging. Uh, so, and and as a product, it tends to it tends to attract um, because of the complexity and the high dropout rate, high levels of, of procuration fees. So, so the, the, it was the majority or, or certainly um, more than half of the, the payments that have been made uh, were, to, uh, were to bridging brokers. And, and actually what we found is whilst, as I think I said earlier, we've had um, over 400 um, registrations of our, our portal of whom, you know, two thirds uh, are existing brokers and one third are new brokers. We've actually seen um, a, a return, a, an increase in proportion of business coming to us via our, our kind of premier uh, brokers. So people that have used Masthaven for a number of years, we're pro what we're probably seeing is um, in in those sort in that sort of environment, um, some of the uh, some of the advising brokers are obviously using bridging specialists, um, and those bridging specialists are going to the place where they know they can get service or where they know they can get. Um, you know, a, a, a product and they're confident uh, in, the, in the response they're going to get and they're, and they're coming to us on that basis. So, so we, we, that's a, a trend that's, that's been seen as well over the last six months. So it, it, whilst it kind of, you know, it calls out from a, from a financial perspective, we, we, all we're trying to do is just go that internally we're trying to communicate some positive messages around what, what has been the result of individuals being um, you know, working so hard and, and, and working in this dur during this time, um, and these are just a few things that, that we kind of thought might might be interesting um, to the market, um, and 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 kind of just you know it's a it's a horrendous time, um, but it, it just gives us a, a kind of snapshot on some of the positives that are coming through as well. Mm. I mean, well, maybe it's fair to say, Beth, what what we tried to do all the way through the last sort of six months is put ourselves in the broker's shoes, put ourselves in the customer's shoes trying to sort of from our experience in previous crunches because we're that old we've been through this before and um, trying to put ourselves in in the shoes of the brokers what do they want so so what you'll have seen at the beginning of this this awful situation six months ago we weren't the first to make changes to our policy and criteria and rates we weren't the last we sat on our hands a little bit watched how things were developing and then tried to make one significant batch of changes and then stick with them and i think that went down very well as well because obviously for different reasons, different, different lenders with different funding models had to change more, more quickly and, and had to make sort of decisions very quickly and change things a little bit more regularly. We think one thing that went down with ourselves well is the fact that we just made one significant change. All right, we have changed a little bit around the edge since, but one significant chunk of change that went down really well. And, and again, back, back to my point earlier, I think something that's helped us greatly over the last six months is something I know you picked up with John and Alan in the last conversation that you had, which is the portal. Because, because again, back to my point now, I, I think we're finding more and more general mortgage brokers that have stayed away and shied away from bridging in the past because I think it's hard, it's difficult, it's complicated. The fact that they can transact business with us now in a portal, very similarly to how they transact mortgage business, it feels less alien to them. 
And I think that's been a really, really big help to them to get into it and, and, and deal with a lender that has a very similar approach to bridging as we do to sort of long term products as well. You've also since um, since March, um, over 2000 of your customers have received funding from Mast Haven. How many of those were uh, bridging customers? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean that that reflects customers that are already going through our, are going through our pipeline as well. So so that that in effect they're either being helped or or they they are helped. Um, so so again, um, I'd have to go and, and ask the team to split that out. But um, I think in terms what what we certainly have seen is if you look at the period before um, lockdown and 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 we were just getting to a point where and we we had obviously had the conversation that said post. Post the election, post the kind of Brexit decision, started to see some confidence levels come in. And but in the first quarter of the year, before lockdown, versus what's happened since, application levels have been about thirty percent up on what we were seeing as a as an emerging positive trend post the election. Actually, for us, uh, our application levels in um, and this, that's purely in bridging um, are, have been kind of thirty percent higher, third higher. And um, if you kind of took that forward and 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 said right, okay, through the year, what if that trend continued? Um, which is, um, which I probably shows, uh, I, you know, I think, um, it, I think it does buck a little bit of the trend in terms of in terms of bridging, um, but gives you a sense of a kind of scale and and kind of how proportionately we're looking to to help help kind of bridging customers as well through the period. That's great quarter on quarter figures. What's it? Um, what does it look like in terms of year on year? And um, so it, it it would be about the same. So it's a little bit more probably than the thirty percent. So. Uh, but if you use that as a as a good proxy, I mean, I think what we saw in the first quarter of this year is pretty consistent through the whole of last year. Probably a little bit more. Um, but if you you know if you said it was a you know we were we were trending at, at kind of pretty pretty consistent levels, and then it, then we've also seen a, a trend up. Now we we, all, we we do attribute some of that down to to the fact we've made ourselves more accessible in terms of the portal. Um, so so the you know that that started to see some some impact as well. So it's hard to kind of work through and say how much of that is is it's just down to you know down to the, the kind of COVID um, piece, but I guess you know the, the, the important message for us is is actually what you know we have continued to take continue to take on new brokers, which a number of people haven't been able to do, um, and to continue funding, um, and 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 to see growth as well. And and despite the fact that you know I think we talked last time, Beth, you know kind of we've got 190 people and and they're all you know pretty much all, all remotely, although we were trending back towards a little bit back towards London. Um, given given Tuesday or well, last yesterday's kind of um, shift, we kind of put some a little bit of that on pause. Um, you know, we've actually had to do that in a in a remote environment as well. So, to to kind of hand, handle that um, that move to a remote working at the same time as picking up kind of thirty percent more activity level at the front end. Um, I think you know, kind of, you can see why some of some of the team are kind of, you know, they're starting to kind of, uh, they certainly feel it. I think when you're working in this environment, it, it is a challenge, um, and and it's the same for same for the brokers as well. Yeah, one one thing we were really really keen on though, Beth, was was we wanted to make sure that that our activity was fruitful. So again, as John said there, as we've seen sort of thirty percent up, uptick on on application volume. One thing that probably pleased me more than anything in the in the short term space with ourselves is the fact that we were able to bring ABMs to market very quickly. But as soon as we brought, because we wanted to make sure that the pipeline washed through quickly, didn't sit there, because you could see almost that even in the short term world, pipelines would be growing, and then the first one back to market that could get physical valuations out the door would clean up empty pipelines. So it was really really pleasing that that we were able to introduce ABMs, but then not only introduce them, get them in, get them in in line and active. But then develop them and evolve them in a very short space of time, and um, so that was something that, that I was really pleased of, and it, and it was enabling us to sort of complete deals very very quickly in the height of the of the physical valuation restrictions. Yeah, I think that's something which I saw at the um, in the Astor conference yesterday, where the um, they were talking about how um, underwriting times have just drastically increased. How have um, how have your underwriters been able to cope in, in the bridging space um, during this time? Yeah, I mean they're, they're certainly carrying. Um, I mean, you saw Pippa last week, didn't you? And I think she's still as she's still as enthusiastic as as ever. But I think you know they, they're definitely managing larger pipelines. Um, so so from that perspective, um, you know that the, they've they've certainly kind of seen their their workloads increase just in terms of absolute levels. Uh, we've managed to kind of obviously recruit to the team as well. 
So, so we've got, um, so Caitlin Pitt joined us, who was, Caitlin was with Lend Invest and with uh, Dragonfly. Um, so she joined as a senior underwriter, started it, uh, last month. Uh, we've got a, another um, underwriter that, that's due to join us in the next quarter. Um, so, so we've been able to go out and, and kind of uh, recruit to the team. Um, but they certainly found, you know, that, that it, it has been a pressure point. And, and the other thing that's, that's kind of coincided with some of this is, um, is actually we've had to, um, through this period, we've, we've also, um, we're making more inquiries. So it's important that we really understand um, who our customers are in this process. And, and, and just, you know, even though um, obviously, you know, you want to be, you want to give a certain decision, you want to give speed, it's important that you also give a decision that you can be confident in and you can stick to. And, and that's meant that, um, that the, the team um, have been kind of a bit more in depth around some of the, some of the areas that we've been, been looking into and, um, and, and just making sure that we truly understand who it is that's, that's coming to us, particularly when you've got um, an introducing broker to us, but the, the applicant may well be uh, a bit further down the line in terms of working with another intermediary. And we need to get, um, get through that and understand that. And that, that's had a bit of knock on in, in terms of some of the time it, it takes to, to, to get things done. Um, but the important thing is, as Rob said, is, is where we can use an, an AVM. We do use an AVM. We, we look to get the valuation instructed, um, you know, very, very quickly. We, we, um, you know, we do upfront um, reviews of, of applications where they've come in. We try and be very clear with, with, with intermediaries uh, on what we need. Um, and then, then, you know, ultimately, we, you know, we, we try not to vary it. But this has been a, a difficult time in terms of some of those service messages that we've had to um, respond to. Um, I mean, we didn't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist also to look at what was, you know, some of the news in terms of this week around, um, you know, the panorama piece around financial crime and, and making sure you really do understand who you're lending to. And, and, and in times like this, um, you know, we, in our view is, whilst it might, it might take a bit longer to go through that application process, we're, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting our applicants and we're protecting our borrowers. Um, and our brokers at the end of the day in terms of going through those, those inquiries and you know that's that's sometimes a difficult message to, to try and communicate um, and that's fallen on the underwriters as well so so they you know they've got to, to go through that process. What advice would you give to brokers um, to try and help speed things up from from their end as well um, I know you mentioned earlier that you've got a decent chunk of the brokers um, who have signed up to the portal um, that, are, that are new, you know, a third of them are, are new to you guys and also new, potentially new to bridging. Um, so um, what, what advice would you give to them who are, who, are, who are potentially new to this sector? Yeah, I mean, we, we make our sales team accessible and then Rob, Rob can talk about that. So, so our sales team is actually there to try and, and help um, kind of understand the rationale for a, for a bridging loan, understand, shape it and, and work it through with, a, with, a, with an intermediary before it comes in to us. So, so they're, they're very experienced individuals and know the market for, you know, I had so many decades of experience they've got between, the, between them. Um, so that work with your sales team, even before um, you start to use the portal is, is one thing. Um, and then, then there are, you know, bridging is a more complex product. Uh, often it has uh, a number of different permutations in terms of um, beneficial owners and limited companies. And, you know, so, so just understand a bit more of the, the story in terms of, um, you know what 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 your applicants uh, kind of kind of bringing bringing to it in terms of the proposition and and, and how, how did that how did that background come come to be just understand that and 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 then you'll have a good a good starting position um, to pick things up with the underwriter but you know rob i don't know from your perspective i think, I think you're exactly right and 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 if, if you look at the bridging sales team that we have at mass haven I, I genuinely believe they're probably one of the most if not the most experienced team in the marketplace they all have many many years of experience working 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 for lenders um, and, and i think although they're not mandated they know what a deal should look like they know what things will kill a deal they know what things will be expected when it gets to an underwrite position so I, so just following on from what john said i think it's about education picking a phone up yes most lenders do it very very similarly but there will be things that mass haven do differently than precise than do differently than, than mt um, and it's trying to highlight those at such an early stage to make sure that if there is a slight delay getting to the case, I don't mean slight, to make sure that that case is in a fit state for a full underwrite as soon as it hits an underwriter's desk. So one yeah, thing I mean, we, 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 we had a so there's a deal that came in today from one of our you know and and it was very clear there was a very definite um, uh, timetable that's needed to be met for a for uh, a deal to pay out. It, there's a reason around it. 
Um, the, the sales team have been very upfront with us in terms of, and we set the expectation and, and then we know we work to that. Um, and, and you also have to be open. So on, on occasion on both the mortgage side and on the, on the bridging side, um, I've had, I've had um, brokers contact, contact me directly. And, and, and that's, I encourage that. My sales team, the sales team know to give out, you know, personal mobile numbers, personal email, email addresses, um, you know, pick up, I don't mind picking up. If, if there's something that really feels like on occasion it's starting to go awry and there's a, there's a problem, we, we could pick it up, you know, I pick it up all, all, all times of the day and night. And then we, we work to make sure that, that where it really, you know, you can kind of um, pull something back and if there really is a timetable, you can work to it. So you, you can always work around the, these, these processes. It's about open communication both ways. Um, but you know, we know we know that this is a difficult this is difficult for brokers. You only have to look at, at, at kind of Twitter feeds. You look at what goes on in in, in kind of the media. We know that that um, that it's taking longer for deals to go through. Um, all lenders, um, and we know that 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 that's creating some 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 problems for for brokers. We try and be as open in terms of communication as possible. We can try and kind of accelerate things through where it may, really makes a difference. Um, but you know, we're, we're very uh, aware of the fact to some extent um, we know that that being being open over the last six months creates has created, um, you know, some, some areas that we need to work through. But which is why we started this process of just going through and saying, OK, what value have we really given so that our teams can feel that that there's there's a kind of a, a real um, kind of something that they can be proud of having been, you know, be part of be part of doing that business over the last six months and taking that toll. Um, managing larger larger caseloads, uh, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous. Sometimes you see, you know, one of our underwriting managers, his, his desk is set up under, you know, <laughs> underneath stairs. You kind of go on car, you know, you go. It's I mean, fortunately, he's man managed to now get himself some dedicated, you know, some real kind of quality space, a bit like yours, but and mine. But um, you kind of go. These these guys are, are working really hard in in new environments, often not not as good as okay. you would want it to be, and and um, and dealing with some really complex business. And, um, that would normally, John, be solved very quickly by looking over the top of a desk huddle by saying, what, yeah. do you think about this? what do you think about that? But when people are spread right across the south of England in the main, it, it does bring those sort of uh, those challenges to bear. Um, I, think, I think the good news is we're busy, which means brokers are busy, which means the sector's busy, which I think is tick, tick, tick. I mean, yeah. to me, that's a really, really positive story. We're busy, brokers are busy, the sector's busy. That's fine. Because uh, because of the, the the positivity, like you said, um, you know, you, you guys are doing doing really well quarter on quarter and, and, and year on year. Um, what plans do you have next for the bridging team for the bridging division at Marsleave, and what yeah. will Marsleave? So 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 that's where my challenge from John comes in, I suppose, Beth. Really, that that in real real terms, I, I I have a phrase that I've used wherever I've been. When and and it tends to have been that I've been at relatively newish lenders. Marsleave books the trend a little bit, but if you think. We've still only been in a bank since 2016. We are still relatively relatively young. So I use a phrase, we need to beat the summer. So we need to keep ahead of the summer because summer is, is a time of season. Take this year out of it for, for, what, for, for horrible reasons that can either make or break your year, that the summer actually kills your business and it takes a while to build it up. Um, I think we've absolutely battered the summer this year, which is fantastic. What we need to make sure now is the market starts to return as, as one or two lenders find that they're able to return to market is that the market share that John suggests that we've had through the uptick in business we've had, we need to maintain that as we move forward. So um, I don't think there's anything that we can tell you today as a sort of hot exclusive that yeah. we plan on doing, but, but be assured there's, there's plenty of things that we want to do to make sure that we maintain our volumes and levels of, of, um, of market share now as we come out of the pandemic. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give you three th I'll give you three things, Beth. You um, so so one, one is, um, it, it's no surprise that... Um, even though refurbishment and, and, and kind of property improvement is an area that people are doing, or it's always been a big use of bridging. Um, I, think we, I think I saw something that said 80% of borrowers plan to do something in their homes in the next 12 months. So our ref uh, we're, we're having a look at our refurbishment and how we do that. Obviously we, we cover refurbishment in, in, as part of our, our standard product, um, but I think we're looking to kind of think about how we can more clearly communicate that. So, you know, refurbishment is a, is a focus. Um, we, we are absolutely, very keen to get back to supporting self-build and uh, SME house builders. Um, so, so that's an area maybe, you know, we're doing, we're doing some kind of some market reviews at the moment and see where some of the gaps are um, for, for maybe something for kind of later in this year or early next year, but certainly um, come, 
you know, stepping stepping forward on on some of that 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 support and build, particularly building out the team and, and delivering against that. Um, and the third element is is technology. So the portal's been a game changer for us and for our brokers. Um, but what we want to do is to say, actually, can we start to use that as part of the underwriting process a bit more? So um, we, we're doing, I don't mind um, saying, we're doing a bit of work with Doc9, um, which is just kicking off, which is to say, okay, how, how would you make that how, digitally? How would you take what we've learned so far from the portal and actually carry it all the way through the underwriting process? Um, looking at how you make, you know, access some of those uh, information sources to make decisions quicker um and and also make the make the experience a little bit help more helpful for our own people and for, for brokers as well so take a little bit of time to digest that um but i think it just shows that even though you know obviously this is this has been a challenging time we, we're already starting to think about the next the next bounce of the ball um and where that investment needs to be as well right some great great developments there um and just just to confirm um you will be looking at um, the development finance market again Q1 next year, specifically SME. Yeah, we, we're, we're doing, uh, we, we have to do uh, product reviews every year anyway as part of being uh, a bank. Um, and so we're reviewing our experience with uh, how we supported the development finance market to date, but also starting to learn from that um, and look at where, where we think the market is developing. Um, and, uh, and so that is a, a, you know, a key area for us to, to look at for Q1 next year. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, guys. That's a pleasure. Good to see you there. Really enjoyed it, Beth. Great to see you again. Thank Thanks, you so much.